Hi, this is the first video in a series called SQL Fundamentals. You need to already be familiar with relational database concepts. A lot of those concepts will come into play and there might be a brief explanation, but in general I will expect you to already understand what relational databases are, things like primary key, foreign key, uh, and what relationships are between different tables. I have a series called uh, Database Fundamentals that you can find in YouTube if you query on my name and Database Fundamentals. Uh, and I'm sure there are other videos out there as well. But you need to know what relational databases are before you start this series. If you want to do the things that I show you here in this series, you will need an Oracle account on an installed database where you can download and install Oracle XE, which is a free version of uh, Oracle database product with some limitations on the features that it offers. You can also download and install SQL Developer. This is free from Oracle and this is what we will use to connect to the database. In my case, I'll be working with Oracle XE installed on my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the series. SQL, that stands for Structured Query Language. You can say SQL or you can say SQL. SQL, uh, the commands that you learn are consistent across most DBMS software. That just means that because of standards set by the American National Standards Institute and which most companies try to comply with, what you learn for SQL will apply in virtually any relational database software. It's not unusual, however, that there are some commands specific to Oracle or specific to uh, Microsoft SQL Server or some other uh, DBMS. So you might have to make a few very uh, revisions if you want to run a script written for Oracle and you take it and try to run it in in this series, we're going to work with a database uh, I'll refer to as student teams. And then uh, the actual name will depend on whatever account you're going to install it in. I will provide you with scripts that will allow you to create the tables and populate those tables with data or insert the data into the tables. There is also a script that would drop all the tables. So I've got a URL that you can go to and it'll, I, I show it in small type here, but it's in larger type at the end of this video. And you can download the scripts. The relational model for this particular database is shown here. We have teams. Students are assigned to those teams. Students are going to do evaluations on their teammates so we have a relationship between student and evaluations. The evaluation will contain uh, several evaluation items with a score for each item. And those items, for example, would be things like uh, professionalism, uh, punctuality, contribution to work, those types of things. What we see in this data model is that we have several one-to-many relationships. When you run the scripts, which I actually uh, have a video for installing the student team's database, when you run the scripts, if you look at the scripts, you'll see that you have to build the, ta the tables in a, sp in a particular order. Some things must be built before other things can be built. For example, you must have a team's table in place before you add the student's table because of the dependency here. Students is going to get the foreign key related to Teams, so Teams has to be built first. So Teams is created before Students, Students is created before Evaluations, and then Eval Items and Evaluations, these two here, would be built before we build Eval Item Scores. SQL can be divided into subsets of statements based on the type of functionality those statements perform in the relational database. We have DDL, Data Definition Language, and these are the sets of commands that create and define objects within the database. We also have DML, which is what most people think of when they think about SQL, because this is the set of statements used to pull data from a database 
to add data to a table, to update data in a table. The DDL, the Data Definition Language set of SQL statements, is used to create objects such as tables in a database. So we have an example here in the smaller print of a create table statement, creating a table called Teams. This has two uh, required columns and one column that does not have to be uh, populated when you insert a row and we have two constraints. Looking at this a little more closely, each column must be assigned a data type and in this example team ID for example is variable character with a field size of 8. In general you should define the field size when you're using variable character because the default width is probably going to be much larger than what you actually need. In the case of Oracle, I believe it's at 4,000 characters. We also have not null defined, which means that when you add a row to the team table, the team ID must have data. It cannot be null. In the same example for creating a teams table, we have two constraints defined. The one shown in red is a definition for the primary key where we use the constraint keyword and we've given a name to the constraint, we've defined it as primary key constraint and we've designated a column, team ID, and it could be more than one column, but in this case we have one column, team ID, as the primary key. We also have a uh, uniqueness constraint in this example we want to make sure that the team name is unique even though we're not using it as the primary key. So if I have a team table with 200 records in it, no one team or no two teams can have exactly the same name. Here is an example of another create table statement. This is for the students table and we have defined the foreign key. So in red shown here we have constraint, the name of the constraint that we assign and then we have the uh, definition of foreign key followed by the column that serves as the foreign key in this table and in this case it's team std underscore team ID which is the corresponding field to team ID in the teams table so we see that with references teams. So in this short overview, we've looked at just an introduction to SQL. Uh, I've told you that we'll be working with SQL Developer and Oracle. We've looked at two subsets of SQL, DDL, and we haven't looked at examples of DML, but we've looked at a definition for that. And we've talked about the databases that will be used in this SQL series, the Student Teams database, and we will also work with Oracle Sample Database Human Resources. So if you want to work along in this video with the examples provided, you'll need some, an Oracle account or you'll need to install Oracle XC. You'll need to download and install SQL Developer. And you see here, you can go to a URL to get the scripts for, how, for building the student teams database, which is in, I believe, the video that immediately follows this, this particular one.